Another YouTuber I was recommended to check out is Noncompete, and he did a video titled Why Capitalism Sucks. Capitalism. It's a great thing, right? Capitalism leads to technological advancement, economic development, and human freedom. Uh, that is, until it doesn't. There's no question that the development of capitalism was a great thing for human society. Unfortunately, over time, capitalism has spun wildly out of control, transforming rapidly from a force for positive social change into a brutal system of oppression that's holding humanity back and destroying billions of lives. Now you're going to come across this argument a hell of a lot. Where capitalism gets to blame for everything, they either tr try to say that capitalism is the early stages of corporatism, or they say that capitalism is corporatism. It's basically their way of trying to, you know, pin the blame off onto capitalism for what we live under today. The fact of the matter is, and I covered in a video before on corporatism, and more recently, you'll find that corporatism is anti-capitalist. It's against the free market. Now one would have to understand recorded history to understand why we're in this position today so that we know what the solution to the problem is in order to prevent such things like the monopoly creation etc. They will make baseless claims and they will state it as if it's based on fact. He makes arguments in this video as if to claim that, you know, the rich got richer and poor get poorer. He doesn't back up anything he says, he just states it, which is my point about his arrogance. And if it's not that, he's then saying that the rich got richer and the poor got poorer. Again, the arrogance to do so, without any information to back up his baseless, silly claims. Let's just have a listen to what he goes on to say with regards to feudalism, and it's, it's rather quite convenient this, just listen to this. To understand why, let's first take a look at the system which preceded capitalism, feudalism. Back in the days of feudalism, society was agrarian. The most important product was food, so the most important means of production were farmlands. At the top of feudal society were the feudal lords who owned the land. At the bottom were the peasants who worked the land. There were other classes too, like the church and merchants and tradespeople, like stonemasons and cobblers and coopers. There was friction and conflict between these classes from time to time, but for the most part under feudalism, society was pretty much static for hundreds of years, especially for the peasant class. Under feudal society, if you were born a peasant, you were probably going to die as a peasant. You were essentially the property of your feudal lord, so there wasn't much opportunity for advancement or changing careers. It sucked. It's rather quite convenient that you would mention that, given the fact that throughout recorded history, wherever you've found collectivism, that's precisely what you've seen. Now, capitalism and socialism didn't just come around in the 18th and 19th century, respectively. It's been around since the days of the ancient Greeks or that of the days of the ancient Roman Empire. You saw the same arguments between Plato and even Aristotle, etc. On the arguments of individualism and collectivism. Capitalism goes back to the days of the first days of barter, the trade, that is, to, so to speak. And it used to be known as meritocracy. In other words, rewarding on merit. And that's what capitalism really is. The development of capitalism over the years became what is the free market system. And that is what capitalism is. It's the separation of the economy from government. As I said, he tries to argue that capitalism developed into what would become this corporatist system today. But you would have to understand history to know why we're in this system today, why we're in this mess today. And it most certainly was not because of economic freedom of individuals pursuing their own economic goals and paths. In other words, it wasn't because of a free market why we're in this place today. As capitalism began to emerge hand in hand with industrialism, things began to change. Early capitalists gave peasants opportunities they never had before. Now, instead of toiling your life away on a peasant farm for a feudal lord, you could go to work for a capitalist in exchange for wages and try to advance your lot in life. As capitalism progressed, the old social order of feudalism rapidly fell to pieces. Run away! Run away! Run away! Run away! 
feudal lords were usurped by wealthy capitalists who owned land and factories, the ancient craft guilds found that they couldn't compete with modern industrial production, and the newly formed working class developed a degree of social mobility as they could move from job to job trying to seek higher wages. This all sounds pretty great, right? Well, it was for a while. Unfortunately, the good times did not last. Over time, capitalist processes lead to increasing economic instability, inequality, and societal destruction. So like I said, he states things arrogantly as if it's based on fact, uh, with baseless silly claims, such as the claim about income inequality, economic instability, and then makes the baseless claim about societal destruction. The whole argument about the income inequality. Now what's the problem with that argument? Equality did not stand for equal outcomes. And that's the problem with their entire argument. Of course there's going to be inequality in the outcomes of what people's income earnings are. There's going to be, because the purpose of equality is not to do with, you know, everybody finishing in the same position. That's not what equality stood for. Equality stood for equal opportunity. In other words, everybody having an opportunity in life to make something of themselves. The whole purpose of meritocracy, in other words, capitalism, is to reward people based on merit. And there is nothing moral. In fact, it's immoral to try and force someone who works with less effort the exact same as someone who works with more effort. There's nothing moral about that at all. But he speaks about economic instability. This is something that I want to talk about. Because if you were to speak about a scale, a question of scale, we acknowledge the fact that there's never been 100% capitalism. Because 100% capitalism is based on anarcho-capitalism. That means no government and it's a completely free market. We acknowledge the fact that, to some degree or another, throughout recorded history, there has been government intervention and, of course, manipulation over certain things. The difference between myself and this individual is, I can give you information to back that up. For example, look at the foundation of the first national bank, which was against the idea of this capitalist system. The foundation of the first national bank in the United States in 1792, they began fixing the ratio of money. Now that is anti-capitalist. That's, that's nothing to do with capitalism. Capitalism is about leaving it down to the free market, to leave the free market be. What happened as a result of fixing the ratio. Well, what happened was is it wiped gold out of the market and made silver the dominant standard. Had that been left down to the free market, that problem would never have occurred. It would have never have caused that instability. This is exactly what I mean. And it's no different to the 19th century. The cause of the booms and busts uh, throughout the 19th century was caused by the trying and testing of paper currency, not because of gold and silver. He doesn't understand history. He just hopes that you buy into something and that's it. And of course, later, they would try to fix the interest rates. When you fix interest rates, yes, it is socialism. Socialism has to have some presence in the economy given the fact there has never been a 100% capitalist system. When you have, you know, those who try to fix prices or fix interest rates or fix the ratio, yes, that is socialism. And it just so happens to be that is what precisely led to the economic instability. And what is capitalism regarding money? Well, capitalism is all about a free market. And what is free market money? Free market money is money that's determined by the people freely in society. That was gold and silver. So how then, without the people's demand, imposing paper currency upon people, how can you blame the capitalist system for the fault of that and what caused the booms and busts? And it's no different to that of the 20th century, where you saw the rise of the Federal Reserve using open market operations in 1922, 
that enabled them to strip the gold standard temporarily from the currency up to about 1929. They were manipulating the interest rates and changing the reserve ratios, again using socialism to do so, which is against everything to do with the capitalist system, and then causing such instability that led to the Great Depression. So there's an example of socialism through interference in the market, creating a problem, and then pushing the blame off onto capitalism and saying, that was the fault of the free market. How the hell is it the freedom of the marketplace that is at fault when the fault is the open market operations in 1922 through the interference? So you see what I'm saying here? We know the cause of such problems and we know what the solution is. What's the solution? Do not touch interest rates. The solution is do not touch the ratio. The solution is, leave the free market be. Because it wasn't the free market that was the cause of the problem. And then he says, societal destruction. Basically socialism that caused a problem, and then he tries to push the blame off onto capitalism, and here we are, sitting with a mixed economy, thanks to all the socialist government interventionism, and apparently, that's the fault of capitalism. To understand why, let's take a look at how capitalism functions. Under capitalism, all of the old classes of lords and peasants and craftsmen and merchants have been swept away. Now there are basically just two major classes, the capitalists who own the means of production, the factories and farms and other businesses of the world, and the workers who perform the labor that keeps the wheels of the economy turning. You could regard business owners, etc., those who are the capital owners, uh, as being that of the capitalists in a capitalist system. He doesn't acknowledge, however, that workers, that is to say employees, can actually be classified as capitalists if they are contributing to the production cycle. Capitalists not only own the means of production, but they also get to keep a significant cut of whatever the worker earns or produces in the form of profit. Basically, capitalist bosses steal labor value from workers and transfer that wealth to themselves. In order for capitalist institutions to survive, they have to turn a profit for the capitalists who own them. Otherwise, they'll be forced out of business by more ruthless competitors. Capitalist institutions literally can't concern themselves with anything but profits, or basically they'll die. So again, it's just like you've seen with arguments I've made before in the past, uh, more recently as well, on the argument on profits. This individual, again, really doesn't understand the role of prices, doesn't understand what profits are. And a capitalist system isn't just about profits, it's about profits and losses. And you require the information of profits and losses in order to know what you're producing, in order to know the information of what to stop producing, or what resources to use and what to stop using, where to allocate scarce resources and where to stop allocating, and what to invest more in and stop investing in, it also tells you how much to produce and how you're going to transport such resources, etc. All of that information comes from profits and losses. It's not as simple as saying that, you know, businesses just want to fill their own pockets, etc. You see, that's exactly what I mean. How can you take people like this seriously if they have never touched a, a, an economics textbook in their life and they don't even know what prices are. It is just embarrassing. Not only does he not give you any information on history to back up his baseless assertions, um, he just really doesn't understand anything at all to do with profits. Nearly all of the efforts of human civilization are now yoked to the will of capitalists who own the factories, the financial institutions, the mass media, the social networks, the tech companies, the medical and pharmaceutical companies. They own everything, so they get to set the agenda for our society. That is actually the fault of government's interference, etc. That's the fault of basically the absence of the free market, such as, for example, the argument he made on the pharmaceutical companies. Now what he's speaking about is the pharmaceutical companies, which are private, had basically shafted the consumer and drove up the costs. Now how did they manage to do that? They managed to do that through government's intervention, through a third party payer system. <laughs> In other words, to blame on socialism 
the socialist government interventionism that resulted in that very problem. It wasn't the fault of a free market. It's all well believing in this deluded fantasy world where he thinks that capitalists just produce whatever the hell they like, the consumer ha hasn't got any power whatsoever and just has to do what they're told and they've got a wee button in the back of them to press and they'll just buy it. That just isn't the real world. In order for you to make profits in a capitalist system, you need to actually produce something that the consumer is in demand of and if you really do not pay attention to your consumers, you're going to end up making losses. His fallacious argument goes on to this of the corporatist system. That is not capitalism.